Hey gang, welcome to Coron, a beautiful destination at the north of Palawan Island. Coron is paradise for island hopping and diving. I spent three and a half days in Coron and I'll show you the highlights in this video. I arrived in Coron town. That's quite interesting. They've built a shop around a tree. So they literally have a tree right in the middle. They've used the trunk here to attach some of their products. So Coron Town, it's actually called Coron Town proper, is not very nice. So the appeal is not the town itself. It is the fantastic excursions to see the nature around it. As everywhere in the Philippines, you might see a lot of fires. Often quite close to their homes, they do that to clear out the dry vegetation. This is the Montapias in the distance with a cross at the top. Great spot for sunset. Coron Town proper is mainly used as a base with affordable hotels. So the town is very busy in the evening with bars and restaurants, but at daytime most tourists go away on a boat island hopping. Or they might jump on a boat to go diving as well. There are a lot of shipwrecks underwater along the coast, amazing for divers. Most Filipinos are strong Christians, so the churches are very busy. You might hear some lovely singing from the churches. <laughs> A must-see in Coron Town proper is the food market. And those are the red eggs. It took me a while to understand why red. I had to ask a couple of different traders. So it's salted eggs. They are boiled with colorant. And the colorant, apparently, it is just to differentiate them, to know which is cooked, which is raw. The cashew nuts is grown locally. I'll show you the cashew fruits in a moment. Seaweed. And the doggy sleeping under the meat. Apologies to my vegan friends watching this video. I had just spotted his cousin alive, just outside the market. That was filmed at 9am, but in the Philippines, it's already time for karaoke. Karaoke is a bit of an institution here. See the fire on the hill there? It was accidental, apparently. My tuk-tuk driver told me two days later. At the time, I just imagined that they were burning vegetation again. Look at all those fishes drying in the sun. Another cool thing to visit around Caron town, it's the Maquinit hot springs. The water is naturally very warm, 38 to 41 degrees Celsius. That is just over 100 in Fahrenheit, I think. Mm -hmm. 
I was on my own on my first day because my friend went diving and I don't dive. So I rented a scooter to go and explore. The motorcycle rental on his contract was the most serious I had in the Philippines. He made me take a photograph of how much I'll pay for each pieces I might break on the scooter. And he actually wanted my license. That's rare. This is Cabo Beach. It is the only beach next to Curran Town. And it is nice, but nothing out of the ordinary. So this is the cashew fruit. You can pick them up on the floor. They are everywhere around Curran. So you can see the cashew nut is at the top. The fruit is decent in juices, but it's actually very difficult to eat. I'll show you. Let's try it. It is so fibery, it's impossible. That's what they look like here in a tree. <laughs> a basketball net, they are everywhere. lovely rice plantations here. Do not look for a beach in Koran town proper. There are none. Well, you've got this one. It's known as Dikanituan Beach. It's not really a beach. It's not sand. It's earth. And it's actually private. It is on an island called Kanituan Island. To get there, you have to take a little bridge. And then you see a sign that says, if you enter the island, call me on this number. Obviously, I didn't call. But Corontan proper, it's actually a bit odd because there is no seafront as such. What happened is that it was a bit too shallow for the boats. You know, every day you have hundreds of boats coming to pick up people for the island hopping. So they've basically reclaimed a lot of land over the sea to then be able to build a lot of um, docking pontoons. So in the distance, you might see this big mass of, of earth. That's what they've done. So it is very convenient, but not very pretty. Because then you do not have any nice bars on the restaurant right next to the sea. This is the top of Monta Pias, by the way, with its magnificent cross and the white letters that read Coron. And a few drones. That's where everyone comes for sunset. And the view is amazing. And of course, I know that through my subscribers, I have a few graveyards enthusiasts. So this is the Coron Cemetery. And a gentleman taking a nap on a grave. That scared me at first. Coron is amazing for divers because there are a dozen shipwrecks underwater. Most of them are Japanese. You might know, through the Second World War, Japan took over the Philippines for a little while. The Japanese, quite smart, they were covering their ships with plants so they could pass as islands. When an American aircraft spotted an island that was moving, that's how the U.S. Army discovered their tricks and started to destroy those ships and sunk them. For most of them, you have to dive. One of them you can see snorkeling. It is the skeleton wreck. Skeleton, not because you have dead people inside, but because local people dive down to steal all the metal from the wreck. So it's now just a frame. Yeah, 
Filipinos are great at basketball. You can quite feel the US influence. So the next day I went island hopping. They come and pick you up on a tuk-tuk usually. The island hopping tours, there are many. You've got A, B, C, D, E, ultimate, super ultimate. It can be a bit overwhelming. It can be a bit confusing to know which to pick. And to be honest, I don't have the answer. This is the area reclaimed on the sea with all the pontoons. Early morning, everyone is there looking for their boats. And you also have street vendors trying to sell you waterproof phone cases and bags that could come in handy. So again, I don't know which of those tours are best. The first day I did the B, and the next day with my friend we did the Super Ultimate. If you arrive with the ferry, like I did, we came from El Nido, then out of the ferry terminal you have a lot of people giving you little flyers. You might want to grab them, they're quite good to know all the different excursions and compare the prices. Those excursions go for the day. They'll try to rent you a kayak. You don't have to. In El Nido, for example, there were a couple of spots where you had to take a kayak because they wouldn't let you swim because of the coholes. They didn't want you to damage the coholes with your feet. In Coron, it's not the case. So if you don't want a kayak, you don't need a kayak. I didn't take one. And then you reach those amazing spots with amazingly clear waters. And all those excursions you do not need to book them ahead from home. I met a young man from Florida in the boat and he had paid, he had booked it from the US weeks ahead and he had paid about three times what I paid the night before. With all those island hopping tours, the lunch is included. They prepare it on the boat and then they usually deliver it on a paradisiac beach somewhere. And it is amazing food and very large quantities as well. There are two amazing lakes to see through those tours. You have the Kayangan Lake and the Barracuda Lake. I'm very impressed by those little trees growing straight out of the rock. The rock is so full of minerals that the trees can just suck off the minerals out of them. No earth. Both of the lakes actually belong to indigenous people. It is the ancestral domain of the tribe Tagbanua. They believe in the spirits of nature, trees, river, lakes. So the lake has a spirit. Annoyingly, you are meant to swim with a life jacket on. Both of the lakes are a mix between fresh water and salty water, about 70% fresh. This is the Barracuda Lake. When you dive down, well, you're not meant to, you're meant to keep your life jacket on, but when you do, you can actually feel the difference in temperature between the salty water and uh, the fresh water.
We are now at the beautiful Twin Lagoons. Careful when you swim, though. I did manage to get stung by two different jellyfishes. One of them, I suspect, might be the dangerous Irukonji. The horrible tiny, tiny jellyfishes. One last little tip about the Philippines. When you go to the toilets, don't run straight to the toilets to do what you need to do. Well, not if you need toilet roll, because it might not be there. It might be outside, so you need to grab it first. You can thank me later. Bye!